Welcome into Conversations with Paul Brown. We are going to be talking chili today. Our guest is Matt Lusk, and he's involved with the Belton Chili Cook-Off that's in lovely downtown Belton. So living out in the country, do you have a big garden every year? My dad, actually, uh, he did plant gardens um, a good bit uh, out beside our house and behind our house. Mo most of the time behind our house uh, when I grew up was just a pine tree okay. forest. Uh, now that's long gone. The beetles took care of that. Yeah. And so um, my, my dad did plant, um, you know, corn and tomatoes and beans and those sorts of things. So we did have a big garden. And most then she, of the your time. mom would put them up? Yep, she she taught me how to can, and we'd can things. We would, uh, and then we'd. It's like all the corn he he planted wasn't enough, so we'd have to leave on a Saturday morning, and go uh, pick corn and fill the whole truck bed up. And I remember sitting on top of the truck bed shucking corn, and you were like higher than the 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 yeah, cab of the yeah, truck, yeah, and you're yeah. sitting up there and you're shucking and shucking, <laughs> and then you 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 do your little uh, fast boil, your little um, and then cut them off the cob and scrape the milk out of the uh, cob and it, it, you know, but we always had fresh corn. I, I mean, like year round, year round, and it was fantastic. Nothing beats that to me. Yeah. My first paint job, I left out of eighth grade, and I never had a summer since eighth grade. Left out of eighth grade, going to high school, and I worked at Span America in Greenville, and I was pulling mattresses out of slitter machines, stacking them up, and pushing them into a warehouse. That's what I did from eighth grade. So I did that in my eighth grade. Uh, and that was my first real pay uh, after eighth grade, going into ninth grade. That was my first paying job. You know, I worked at Sh uh, Shakola Mill. Oh yeah. Uh, I worked what they called the um, I can't the, the mini shifts. Uh, so you would go in Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday till midnight. And so I would get almost forty hours of work in three days. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but t to me, I mean, as a high school student, you know, working on weekends. And not having to work really during the week and having money in your pocket to spend, you know, if I needed to drive a car, I needed to put gas in the car. If I wanted to drive a car, I had to pay my insurance. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I actually appreciate that today. You know, back then it was, you know, I had to have a job. Yeah. But I believe that built a lot of work ethic um, and, and made me responsible to do things these days. I didn't understand that at that point, but absolutely. I, uh, and then I worked at Jake's actually really? in, in Belton, my senior year of high school. Uh, but I worked at Jake's as a curb hop back when they, the people would still pull up and honk the horn. You know, they never honk the horns on sunny days. It was always rainy or cold and, and, and snow or whatever, if we got very little snow, but I mean, it was always the worst weather. And that was, I mean, and they'd give you their leftover 15 cents for a tip. Here you go. Uh, and think so, they are doing you a favor. Oh, I was like, thank you very much. <laughs> so, and they always seem to have chihuahuas sitting on their lap <laughs> trying to bite you. But uh, it was, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was fun. So you graduate from BHP. Yes, sir. And then was there any question about what you were going to do? Yeah, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I had my mind set on going to uh, like Savannah College of Art and Design or some sort of art school. And that's what I really, really, in, in my heart of hearts, just wanted to do. But an Army recruiter was calling me. Um, if it had been a Navy recruiter, if it had been a Marine recruiter, if it had been an Air Force recruiter, yeah. whatever, I would have uh, went into that branch. But uh, his name was Sergeant Bug, B-U-G-G, and uh, he would call me, and, uh, you know, I took the ASFAB and did very well on the ASFAB. And so Sergeant Bug took me down to the MEP station and, uh, you know, did our preliminary stuff. And by the time I got home, I was, I was signed up and ready to go. Uh, and so I turned 18 July the 26th, uh, July the 30th, I was at basic training. Fort Jackson? Fort Jackson, yeah. So you didn't have to go far? Didn't have to go far. How did you get there? But it was there? far enough. Uh, how did I get there? Yeah, did they put you on a bus? They picked me up in a bus. And dro well, actually, uh, yeah, it was a bus. And they drove me and like seven or eight other guys uh, down to there. And we the night before we went into the uh, MEP station, um, they gave us they gave us a, a ticket for some uh, free food over at the, uh, what do they call it? Not a little cricket, but the... Uh, uh, lizard, lizard stick it, lizard yeah, stick it. lizard stick it, and, and we stayed at the uh, Red Roof Inn, and uh, having a night of it. And uh, the day before we go into the to the army, I went to AIT, 
and, and that was also in Fort Jackson. And my, my MOS was a 71 Delta, which was legal, which was a legal specialist. So I was attached to JAG. You okay. know, if you ever watch TV yeah. show yeah. JAG, yeah. the lawyers and the right. uh, court marshals and things like that, that's what I did. I was actually a essentially a paralegal for JAG, okay. but I did Article 15s. Uh, I did a lot of court court martial paperwork. I did a lot of running around for the lawyers, um, which wasn't a bad gig. N not a bad gig at all if you were attached to a, a decent right. company. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you this: my uh, 182 field artillery had the most Article 15s in. Which is, is what? An article, article 15 is, is a, a, essentially a punishment where they can reduce you in ga grade, right. uh, rank, and uh, fine you, and then um, confine you to barracks or extra duty and things like that. 182 Field Artillery had the most Article 15s in Division Artillery, which had the most Article 15s in the 1st Cav Division, which had the most Article 15s in Fort Hood, Texas, which had the most Article 15s in the U.S. Army, which means I was the busiest legal specialist in the U.S. Army. And that's the truth. Which we laid the foundation for your future work. <laughs> that's exactly right. So. Our guest is Matt Luskin. When we come back, we're going to talk chili. Where did your passion for cooking come from? Because I like to eat. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. You, you know, I, I think, honestly, I, I've, I've, I've thought about this a lot. And, um, you know, my mom was a great cook. And she was a, she was a what I call an artistic cook. She would take things and put things together and make it taste good. You know, um, and I, I didn't know how she did. I was like, how did you take a can of corn and, a, you know, a, a two stalks of okra and uh, those sorts of things and, and, and put all that together? and uh, make it make it taste good anyway uh so she was able to do that and, and not i don't know if that's you know that passed down to me but my, i think that uh, like i said i thought about this a lot and i think that cooking in itself is an art and, and i had mentioned a couple of times that you know you know art was in my blood i want to go to the art institute and i, and I came back and did some design uh, graphic design work, you know, painting and and and, and drawing and doing some sculptures. So I, I love that. And to me, it's it's being a good cook is an artistic talent, and 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 it's a form of expression that you can eat. And I absolutely, <laughs> I'm, and I love that part. I mean, everything from smoking meats, to, you know, it's it's a, it's a process. Yeah. You can't just smoke, you know, a butt in a matter of. 10 minutes yeah. and throw it on a piece of bread. Right. It takes a while. To, you have to, you know, you have to take care of it. You have to rub it. You have to put it in the refrigerator, let it sit. You have to smoke it. It takes a long time to smoke. You have to do all sorts of things. So I think um, using different spices and, and experimenting and failing often um, and, and, and being able to express myself through food um, has kind of filled a void that maybe just, you know, regular art has uh, has left. So I think that's where my interest was. Because you first got interested in barbecue and competed. Yes, that's exactly right, because I loved cooking barbecue. Um, I competed in, you know, some of the South Carolina uh, Barbecue Association events, just a few, did a, I did a few KCBS uh, events, and I would, uh, you know, I would compete at like local church things and, you know, ice cream, you know, make ice cream, who has the best. I just loved doing that sort of thing and I found uh, being competitive in that was was enjoyable and you did pretty well in your barbecue yeah contest. I did I, you know me me and my uh, little pull behind smoker and everybody else out here with these big rigs and you know you know twenty thirty thousand dollar yeah. setups and I'm like fifteen hundred bucks over here and I and some Kingsford and some logs and I'm ready to rock and roll but I did pretty good yeah. uh, and so I enjoyed it it just uh, you know, doing the KCBS stuff, it just, it costs too much money. Uh, and it's just spending that money. You have to buy your, your you know, your, your ribs and your your brisket and your butts and your chicken. You have to buy all that stuff and prepare it. And it's essentially, it's a, it's, a, it's a full weekend deal. And, you know, I enjoyed it, but I didn't have, I didn't enjoy that long of a competition and, and having to spend that much money uh, to do it. How did you then become involved with the, with chili? Well, a few years ago, um, 
uh, some business leaders in, in Belton uh, and some uh, church folks at uh, Belton Presbyterian Church um, put together, they wanted to put together a chili cook-off and they wanted to just raise money for, for BEMA and for you know, Center for the Arts and those, those, those places and they thought the chili cook-off would be a, a good way to do it. Well, upon further investigation and those sorts of things, they found that they could get sanctioned by the International Chili Society. It's like, okay, well, you know, essentially, you get sanctioned, you have instant cooks. They'll come from all over the place. Um, so they did that, and uh, they said, okay, now we need to get some local people to compete. And so I remember a, a gentleman came out to my office, and he uh, he come, sat down, and he said, he said, I want to know if you wanted to be in a chili cook-off. I was like, Okay, you know, I guess so. You know, where is it? As they say, here in Belton. I was like, okay. I was like, how hard can cooking a pot of chili be? They say, no, you have to cook it on site. I was like, okay, well, I could, I got some things, and you got to do this, and here are the rules. And I was like, who ever heard of rules of cooking chili? I mean, you must put a bunch of stuff in a pot, right? Well, I'll be honest with you, it is tougher than it sounds, uh, especially doing the international chili, um, red chili or chili verde. They're it's pretty strict on what you can and can't do. You know, it's meat, it's gravy, no beans, and that's it. Um, they didn't have home style at that, at that point in time, but they did have people's choice that you give out to the public. This is the ninth year. This is the ninth year? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's, 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 been, it's been a while. Uh, From those early days, getting your feet wet, how many came and what was the crowd? People in Belton didn't know what a chili cook-off was about, right? You know, 800, 1,000 people had actually showed up to eat chili, if I, you know, if I had to guess. They did a great job marketing and, and those sorts of things. How well did you do? I, I won People's Choice um, the, first the, year? the first year at the event, um, but my red chili, I, I, was try, I was trying to look up recipes of ICS cooks, International Chili Society cooks, online and I was looking at recipes, how to cook it, how to cook this Texas red chili. I had no idea. You know, all I was used to is cooking what we, you know, throw it in a pot at home, you know, ground beef and some tomatoes and, you know, uh, chili powders yeah. and cumin and that sort of thing. Uh, but I was trying to do something that I had no idea how to do it and to me it tasted horrendous. Uh, and evidently to the judges it did too because I did not do very well. But, it, but the next year, the following year, I said, you know what, I said, I'm going to, um, I'm going to cook what I think is going to taste good, but I'm going to just not put any beans in it, that okay. sort of thing. So next year I did that, and I cooked what I thought was good, and I won. I won red, um, and uh, won people's choice, and I won salsa two years in a row. So my, my salsa's done really well. My salsa does the good everywhere. And after that, uh, Jim Bright said he was going to step down because he was going to run for city council right. or something. Um, and so he, they, they got me into a room, all of them, and they circled me with clubs and, and axes and, you know, those sorts of things. No threading. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> we, you can't cook anymore, number one. They said, number two, we need you to uh, take over and uh, be the uh, chairman for the event. And I kind of wanted to do it uh, just because I, sometimes I need a little challenge. Yeah. You know, I like to have projects and things like that to do. And so I did it. Um, and so this was is my uh, sixth year as being as, head as, as being a chair. Yeah. Last year we had uh, fifteen states represented. This year we have just as many. We have people from uh, California. We have people from uh, Florida. We have people from Canada, Michigan, since uh, Ohio, um, uh, Connecticut, uh, New York, New Jersey, all down here. Uh, competing to go to the world championships. And why is it important for these people to come here to compete? Well, this is this is a competition that's an automatic qualifier for the world championships, which this year is held in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, the last four years it's been held on the West Coast, uh, Las Vegas, Reno two years, okay. Palm Springs. And then the, all these people come here because it's, it's a big event, And number one. Number two, it's fun. Number three, we put on a great, great event and they enjoy it. No, but realistically, they come to, if you win, you will automatically qualify for the World Championships. And this year we have red chili, we have chili verde, we have salsa, and we have home style. 
We also have People's Choice, which is more of a local um, local amateur thing, yeah. and we're actually paying uh, two one organizational local and one just a individual amateur local People's Choice winner. Uh, because sometimes you get you get organizations like churches and you know fire departments and things right. like that that um, that they have a lot of folks that follow you know a congregation come out and the whole congregation yeah. votes you know. But well, the people, but the people that go and there are thousands that show up, really have a good time. There's more than just chilling in downtown Belt. Yeah, we we all have a band. We have uh, we have different food vendors like craft vendors. Um, we've got uh, some. Uh, classic cars that'll be there, um, and, and, and the band, the Combo Kings. You might have heard of the Combo Kings. They'll they'll be playing all day. Uh, we'll have radio stations that's going to be there. Hot chili eating contest. That's always a, a fun thing to see. Um, and the fun starts when eleven o'clock is the public tasting. It starts, but we'll set up. We'll be set up from seven o'clock in the morning, uh, and, and and awards will go until uh, will be presented at about 4.30, but you come in at 11, taste public, uh, public tastings for chilies from from everybody there, but you come early and, and watch people, you know, cut their vegetables and cut up their onions and cook their chilies, get ready to uh, kick off the day. A lot of fun in downtown Belton, their chili cook-off. If you haven't been, it's something you will really enjoy. We want to thank Matt for taking time out to share his story with us. We want to invite all of you to be back with us next week, same time. For another edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care, everybody.